，不许徇私留情。The aunt, uncle, and dad are waiting outside for signals before heading inside and ask for forgiveness from Yao Yao. They waited and waited and realized something is wrong. Ching Shu realized his wife already carried out the punishment. General, stop. General, who is that? Looking at his daughter, Ching Shu was heartbroken. Even a military man can't bear the military spanking, let alone his little girl Niao Niao. Ching Shi scolded Xiao Yuanyi for the first time ever. Even Ching Shi, the uncle who always respected his sister-in-law, cannot believe she can be so cruel. Xiao Yuanyi felt wronged, angrily asks Ching Shi and his wife to take Niao Niao with them at their new post so she can wash her hands of her. He. <laughs> Xiao Yuanyi kneels on the floor facing Niao Niao's room, feels the pain in her heart. Wan Chi Chi came to visit the next day and was curious who spilled the beans. The first person Yao Yao came up with is Ling Bu Yi, not knowing the whistleblower is actually Madam Wan. Madam Wan likes Yao Yao and her must get even attitude, but felt that she shouldn't allow her smarts to go to her head and should be taught control. Yao Yao can't believe Ling Bu Yi told on her and told Lian Fang to toss away the medicine he sent over. Yao Yao left with her uncle and aunt before she fully recovered. She said her goodbyes to her dad and bothers, but kept on looking towards the house for her mom. What Niao Niao didn't know was Xiao Yuanyi was secretly hiding in a carriage not far away, watching over her. She even gave Ching Shi and his wife one of her soldiers in order to protect Niao Niao. Xiao Yuanyi obviously cares about her daughter, so why hurt her? She should love her with all her heart before it's too late. What did a young girl that hardly ventures outside of her home do if she encounters bandits? Even with the accompanying soldiers, how many girls can stay calm and not panic? The carriage got flipped over, and her aunt, Sang Shanhua, suffered injuries. Niao Niao calmly assessed the situation and started planning ahead. Liu Yao went to the nearest county guard to ask for help. Niao Niao, along with her aunt and the rest of the servants, rode to the empty hunting lodge, waiting for rescue. They tossed all the valuables along the way, think it may help speed up the ride and perhaps save their lives in the process. Niao Niao start preparing for battle as soon as she reached the lodge. She tried to use whatever she can find to build a good defense system for them to stop the bandits. The bandits didn't want the gold. What do they want? What are they after? Niao Niao did all she can, and now she waits. The bandits changed their attack methods. Niao Niao ordered arrows to be fired, causing serious casualties. The bandits suffered heavy losses. The leader captured Ah Miao, the soldier given by Xiao Yuanyi. Niao Niao cried and blamed herself for Ah Miao's capture. We are born in troubled times. People's lives are cheap. You save one person, you save yourself. You save a hundred people, you save a town. You save ten thousand people, you save the world. This is why Niao Niao's parents left her behind to go to war, hoping to save the world. At this time, the other soldier came and told Niao Niao that all the injured bandits have been rescued. The bandits attacked and retreated in an orderly manner. They are well trained and no ordinary bandits. Plus, they weren't interested in the gold, silver, or jewelries. Niao Niao finally figured out they are rebel soldiers. Niao Niao and her aunt accidentally discovered the rebels, and to avoid getting exposed, they came after them. In the meantime, at Huaxian City, the rebel general Fan Cheng is forcing the old county magistrate to open the gate by killing innocent people. They want to take control of Huaxian so they can cause chaos when the emperor tours the area. To protect the safety of the people in the village and spoil the rebels' plan, the old county magistrate decided to go to battle alone. The old county magistrate, an 80 or 90 year old man, put on his armor and led the soldiers of Huaxian without hesitation. He opened the gate and embarked on a road of no return. The old county magistrate is outnumbered, but put up a good fight and sacrificed his life for the country. 
Fan Chun led his rebel soldiers into the city and started destroying homes and killing innocent people. Ling Bui arrived just in time. A safe from way below it's Ling Bui. The rebels were frightened by the arrival of Xi Jiao Wei and started fleeing in all directions. Nan Nan, a little girl, accomplished the task given to her by her grandfather, the old county magistrate. Ling Bui took an arrow in the bath while protecting Nan Nan. Liang Chiu Fei, Ling Bui's trusted right hand man. Delivered the news of Qing Shi being the new county magistrate and his traveling entourage included Chang Xiaoshang. The rebels returned to the lodge and broke through its defenses. They started killing the servants before Yao Yao revealed their true identities. The rebel leader promised to kill them all and even revealed Am Yao has been tortured to death. Yao Yao and her servants are no match for the rebels. Yao Yao's hero shows up. Just in the of time, again, when she's about to meet her fate, a hand up for the rebel leader. Yao <laughs> Yao, a young girl that just left home, has never seen such a scene in her life. She grinds her teeth and continues to help the injured. Ling Bui gave her a handkerchief doused with calming powder to help with the discomfort. Niao Niao wanted to look after the wounded Hei Jiao Wei soldiers to show her gratitude. Ling Bui chopped off the tail of the arrow with less than half an inch left. The accompanying medic said an incision is needed to remove the arrow but he has no experience in suturing such a serious injury, and he needs to be attended to immediately. Niao Niao, after careful observation, came up with a suggestion. Ling Bu Yi is only more than happy to try. Niao Niao then carefully looped the Shaoshang string into his chest, worrying about hurting him further. <laughs> Ling Bu Yi took Niao Niao's Shaoshang string while the medic was doing the bandaging. He then recognized the arrow as being from the military and confirmed the rebels indeed want to overthrow the government. Thank goodness he squashed whatever start they were hoping to accomplish at Huaxian City. Young Lord, it's unlucky to kill surrenders. Niao Niao wanted to avenge Am Yao, the servants, and the coachman. She volunteered to kill the rebels the same way they killed the innocents. Ling Bu Yi stopped Niao Niao from witnessing the execution because he didn't want her to have any psychological repercussions. She wouldn't be deterred, of course, and followed behind and saw everything anyway. Ling Bu Yi decided to go after Fan Chang, the rebel general. The two glanced at each other from far away saying a silent goodbye. Qing Ji and Liu Yao finally arrived after everything was over. The truth is Qing Ji is the weakling. When he heard about the attack, he was so worried that he fainted. When he saw his wife in Niao Niao's broken carriage, he fainted. And when he saw the valuables littering in the woods, he was so angry that he fainted again. Qing Ji and Liu Yao went back and forth in the mountain for a day and night but never came across the bandits. Niao Niao became angry just thinking about it. Niao Niao came to the realization that God has a plan for everyone so we might as well accept our fates. Niao Niao and company continued their journey to Huaxia City with Chiu Fei and Hei Jiao Wei escorting them. Once they reached Huaxia safely, Chiu Fei said his goodbye. Huaxia was a shock to the system. There are bodies everywhere, houses burned to ashes, and families destroyed. Niao Niao felt the pain to her core. Avoid what? What haven't I seen before? Emperor Wen is a popular emperor that's liked by everyone. Wen is a talkative person, especially with his adopted son Ling Bu Yi. Emperor Wen grew up with Bu Yi's uncle as boys and since Bu Yi's family perished at the siege of Gu City, 
he feels responsible for him and treats him like his own. Wen is going out of his way to persuade Ling Buyi to get married, as soon as possible, so he can extend it the Hu family bloodline. Wen has even bestowed Ling Buyi all the rewards of the Hu family to no avail. All Ling Buyi wants to do is fighting and killing and this time he even returned injured. Emperor Wen, having a conversation with Chiu Fei and Chiu Qi brother only to discover the real reason behind Ling Buyi's injury, to his surprise. That girl is who? Chu Ling Hou, the Empress of the Empress of the Empress. Emperor Wen was beyond excited to find out Ling Bu Yi likes someone. The news instantly puts him in a good mood. Xiao Shang, in the meantime, was busy helping people of Guaxia rebuild their homes, with Liu Yao constantly by her side taking care of her. The money in the county treasury was not enough to buy the needed materials to rebuild the city, so Liu Yao donated everything he has, hoping to make a difference. This gave Xiao Shang an idea and she went to her uncle and suggested a fundraiser, giving recognition to generous donors. Business people, hoping for a good reputation, quickly helped Xiao Shang raise enough money to rebuild people's homes. Ling Bu Yi made the largest donation and donated anonymously in order to help Xiao Shang. Emperor Wen, reading the report on Hua Xiao and remembering Ling Buyi's girl is in Hua Xiao, started speaking loudly on purpose and praising Chen Xiao Shang. Sure enough, Emperor Wen got a reaction out of Ling Buyi. He asked to go to Hua Xiao, in person, on the ground that the old county magistrate sacrificed his life for the country, to present a decree of commendation. Niao Niao and Liu Yao are a couple now. Even though Ling Bu Yi is the adopted son of the emperor, he is also a decisive general. The old county magistrate and his entire family perished in the rebellion, even Nan Nan, his only granddaughter, didn't make it. Xiao Shang was heartbroken and Liu Yao, who followed her the entire way, sees the softness in her heart and the light emanating from her. Liu Yao promised he will be by her side for the rest of his life, no matter what and Xiao Shang agreed. Liu Yao's gentle enthusiasm is good for her. Ling Bu Yi realized he's not suitable for Xiao Shang. He is a cold killing machine incapable of warmth. Xiao Shang shouldn't be surrounded by people like him. Ching Shi rushed to Huaxian as quickly as he can when he heard the news. He sees that his daughter has put on some weight, which must mean she's looking forward to the marriage. No matter what, Ching Shi is not happy about losing his daughter so soon. Back in the capital, Emperor Wen is complaining about Ling Bu Yi not settling down with Ji Xun. Ji Xun thought that Ling Bu Yi will be getting married soon, from the exchange between him and the emperor, so he mentioned the news of the engagement between Chen Shaoshang and Liu Yao. Ling Bu Yi quickly excused himself and left the hall. Emperor Wen asked which Chen daughter will be marrying into the Liu family. Xiao Yuan Yi is firmly against the marriage. She doesn't approve of Niao Niao's act first and tell later attitude, plus the Liu family is governed by the eldest son and Liu Yao is from the second son, which is weak, and his father died early. If Niao Niao marries into such a family, she will not have an easy life. This has been a marriage of verbal agreement. The betrothal gifts were given, but never accepted. Names weren't asked, invitations weren't exchanged, and nobody asked for Xiao Yuan Yi's approval. So what kind of marriage engagement is this? After experiencing life and death, Niao Niao wants to have a better relationship with her mom but her mom's temper is still the same, and she wants to break up her and Liu Yao. Niao Niao said it was unfair and Xiao Yuan Yi forbid them from meeting in private. Of course they got caught by her mom while meeting in the middle of the night. People today needs to have street smarts. The same holds true for people back then, otherwise people will miss those that should be cherished. Xiao Shan and Liu Yao took the carriage given by her aunt to tour the nearby field and tea gardens. 
Xiao Shan started playing the flute, gazing at such a beautiful scenery. The sound of the flute traveled through the hillsides and attracted the attention of Huang Fui. Looking to the carriage, he knew right away who Xiao Shan is. Great flute and great melody. Mademoiselle, are you the niece of Shen Hua, 